I tried six of the top web browsers to see if they could dethrone Chrome. I started by comparing the speed and performance of each browser. I combined test results from browserbench.org with real world testing to assess speed and stability. Looking at the benchmarks, Chrome scored the best in one out of three tests, and surprisingly, Arc scored best in the other two. I ran each test in an incognito tab to ensure that third party extensions weren't skewing the performance. And although Arc scored much higher than Chrome in two of the three tests, it doesn't feel much faster than Chrome in my real world testing. Chrome, Brave, Arc, and Edge feel equally zippy and responsive. Opera loads sites quickly, but the interface often lags. And while Safari is supposed to be the most optimized browser for Mac, it loads sites slower than any other browser, including loading Apple.com. Every browser except Safari is based on Chromium. Google's open source browser project developed as part of the launch of Google Chrome in 2008. Safari is powered by Apple's WebKit engine, and although it does have some advantages I'll talk about later, speed is not one of them. Since the other five browsers are all based on Chromium, their speed should theoretically be identical, but Google Chrome still seems to be the most responsive and reliable of the bunch. This is likely because Google has a heavy influence over the Chromium project, and it was purpose built with Google Chrome in mind. The other browsers are adding features on top of Chromium, which can affect the speed and stability. Brave claims to be more resource efficient than Chrome, but sites like Google Maps struggle to function smoothly in Brave and other Chromium browsers. Okay, but apart from performance, what features make these browsers unique? Chrome has embraced AI in its recent versions, with features like automatic tab grouping, writing assistance, and access to Gemini in the browser bar. Chrome has the basics you'd expect, like browser profiles, a password manager, and a variety of themes. But even with the addition of AI features, Chrome feels stale compared to other browsers. It lacks a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker, which is something you'll find in Brave. Brave's built-in ad blocker works well, and it won't be affected by the upcoming changes to Google's extensions API. Brave has a built-in password manager and crypto wallet, but there's not as many AI features as other browsers. Brave's Leo AI can summarize pages, documents, and PDFs, and answer questions about anything. It's a powerful addition to Brave, but I'd like to see more interactive AI features added like automatic tab organization. Arc Browser maximizes AI with tab organization, summaries of pages when you hover over links, and the ability to ask a question about a page with Command or Control F. Now, if you've never seen Arc before, you might be looking at the interface wondering what in the world is going on. And that's because Arc not only uses vertical tabs, but it also puts the browser bar in the sidebar. The interface takes some getting used to, and while the colors are customizable, you can't customize the layout at all. It's a think different browser you'll either love or hate, but many of the AI features we're seeing in Chrome and other browsers were in Arc first. Arc also has my favorite feature any web browser can have, automatic picture in picture on videos when you switch tabs. It's such a simple feature, but not many web browsers have this. Opera thankfully has this feature, and it's one of the reasons I used it for over a year. Opera loves to promote the optional sidebar as a useful feature, though I'm not convinced it's that helpful. They say it has a built-in messenger where you can conveniently access Facebook Messenger and Telegram, but it's basically loading these websites in smaller boxes attached to the sidebar. The sidebar is also where you can access workspaces to keep tabs isolated from each other. But unfortunately, workspaces share cookies and extensions, and Opera does not support multiple user profiles. You can work around this by installing Opera multiple times and signing in with a different account for each installation, but this is a very inconvenient way of having multiple profiles. So while you'll be restricted to one profile, you can use tab islands to automatically or manually organize tabs and remove clutter. There's also a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker, though Opera may not be the best example of a privacy forward browser, as I'll dive into later. Moving on to Microsoft Edge, I describe the features of Edge as similar to Arc with a more traditional interface. It also pulls some inspiration from Opera, with an optional sidebar that has many websites in smaller boxes. Edge can do both horizontal horizontal and vertical tabs, but if you use vertical tabs, the browser bar still lives on top, unlike in Arc. Edge has an insane amount of productivity
connectivity features. The Workspaces feature can be used solo, or you can collaborate with other users and allow them to browse the same tabs in real time. You've got easy access to Microsoft Copilot to ask questions and help you compose text. There's also a tab organizer feature to group similar tabs automatically. And as you may expect, Edge is tightly integrated with other Microsoft services. There is a built-in tracker blocker, though you'll still want to install an ad blocker extension for best results. Edge works surprisingly well on Mac despite it being Microsoft's browser. But if you are a Mac user, you could also use Safari. Safari is officially the most boring browser of the bunch, falling behind with a lack of innovation. The absolute basics are there, profiles, a built-in tracker blocker, and tab groups, though there's no option to organize tabs automatically with AI. You can share tab groups, which feels similar to Edge's collaborative workspaces. But there's not much new in the way of AI. Even with the introduction of macOS Sequoia, there's not many new features in Safari. There's a new highlights feature that pulls relevant info from the page and highlights it, but time will tell how useful this feature is. We could see more AI features implemented in Safari with the rollout of Apple Intelligence later this year, though there's no concrete information on how that will impact the browsing experience. Ultimately, Safari's strong suit is its perfect integration with the Apple ecosystem. You can only use Apple Pay in Safari, and if you want to use your Mac's Touch ID sensor as a passkey on a website, you can only do that in Safari. Now, it's easy to just pick a web browser based on performance and features, but you should also consider privacy and security. Chrome is one of the most secure web browsers on the market, thanks to having Google's resources behind it. But it's not a privacy respecting browser. Google is a data company. They make their money by collecting your data and targeting you with ads. That's Google's entire business model. That's why services like Gmail, Google Search, Google Maps, and Google Docs are free. And Google Chrome was designed to make Google services run as smoothly as possible. Google has made repeated moves to increase its revenue, including making it harder to develop ad blocker extensions in any Chromium browser. The privacy concerns continue with Edge and Opera. Edge is deeply integrated with Microsoft services and has a history of tracking users. And while Opera offers a built-in VPN, it's still owned by a Chinese company, raising some privacy concerns. If you want to use a browser that focuses on privacy, consider Brave, Arc, or Safari. Brave was co-founded by the co-founder of Mozilla, and it addresses some of the privacy quirks of Chromium. Brave's website outlines some of the modifications they've done to Chromium, including proxying communications with Google services through Brave's servers. Despite this, Brave has found a way to monetize their browser without selling your data, allowing you to opt into optional ads that respect your privacy and share a percentage of the revenue in crypto. Arc Browser doesn't focus its marketing on privacy as Brave does, but their privacy policy outlines that they don't sell your data to Google or track your activity for advertising. But perhaps the most privacy forward browser is Safari. Apple has shown a long-standing commitment to privacy, and since they make their money on hardware and subscriptions, they aren't incentivized to collect your data to monetize. Making sure your browser doesn't collect your data helps protect your privacy, but the reality is, your data is still being sold to advertisers and data brokers. This results in a bunch of spam calls and texts. Not only that, your personal information like your home address, email address, and phone number is publicly available on Google. This is your data. But how do you remove it from all of these websites? I removed my data with Incogni, the sponsor of today's video. Incogni scrubs your personal info from the web and takes less than three minutes to set up. Incogni tackles over 180 data brokers and people search sites, and it will save you so much time over trying to remove the data yourself. Incogni gets to work immediately after you set it up, and you'll see comprehensive reports to understand exactly what Incogni removes. Incogni has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're ready to try it for yourself and protect your data, I'll have it linked below. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's video. And now, let's take a look at how each of these browsers handles syncing your data. Every browser can sync your history, bookmarks, and extensions between devices. Chrome, Arc, Opera, Edge, and Safari do this by having you sign up for an account with your email. Brave takes a different approach, which doesn't require you to sign up for an account. Instead, they use a sync chain which securely syncs data between devices. The biggest security risk is that anyone could get your sync code if they have physical or remote access to your device, but cookies are not synced between devices. So even if someone did gain access to your browsing history, they would not be automatically logged into your accounts. Something every browser supports is hidden 
hitting that subscribe button. It's free to click subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you never miss a new video. A final consideration when picking the best browser for you is extensions. All Chromium browsers support Chrome extensions, meaning Chrome, Brave, Arc, Opera, and Edge can all run extensions from the Chrome Web Store. Safari has its own extensions library since it's not using Chromium, and you'll find the most important extensions like password managers and ad blockers, but you may not find every extension you like to use. Apple's Marketplace has around 2,000 extensions compared to the 130,000 extensions on the Chrome Web Store. So in the end, which web browser is best? Well, that depends on what's most important to you. If you want the smoothest, most reliable web browser, use Chrome. It's boring and it doesn't respect your privacy, but it's fast and stable. I have yet to find a smoother browser, and I ultimately launch Chrome when I'm having trouble loading sites and other browsers. If you generally enjoy Chrome, but are concerned about trusting Google with your data, go with Brave. Brave is still powered by Chromium, so it can run your Chrome extension but they've emphasized privacy with the built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker and the modifications to Chromium. Keeping with the theme of privacy, if you want nothing to do with Google and you're a Mac user, consider Safari. It's a vanilla experience, but it's widely regarded as one of the most privacy respecting browsers. And if you're looking for a browser that pushes the boundaries of innovation, use Arc. Arc is different, perhaps too different for many. But there's no denying that Arc has come up with a lot of the AI features that have recently made their way into Chrome, Opera, and Edge. Just keep in mind that no matter which web browser you choose, you still need to take action to protect your privacy. I'll have a link to Incogni below so you can get started. As for my favorite browser, I've been using Arc for about six months now. I plan to continue using it. And if you're wondering what makes Arc so different from other browsers, I have an entire video on that here.